Okay, welcome. So in this tutorial, um, we're gonna analyze how to solve the Schrodinger equation using finite difference methods. So it will be relatively simple. So um, I will utilize to create extent the MATLAB function spdiax, which puts stuff in the diagonals of matrices. So for example, um, I can create this finite difference Laplacian matrix in one dimension, um, um, like so. So I just call this FD. And then I have this matrix L. And the matrix L looks like this. Then it has um, sort of same stuff in the diagonals and upper and lower diagonal. It's a tri diagonal matrix. And then we are going to multiply a vector with it. And if you think the vector values at each point, they will be sort of. Um, so this one, this one, and this one will be multiplied with 1, minus 2, and 1. And this equals to the finite difference approximation. Then in the corners, you can see that there is no 1 here. Then it sort of means that it's implicitly assumed to be 0. So it accounts for 0 boundary condition. So if I say that I have some um, h, so the in the finite difference derivative you have to divide with uh, uh, the grid spacing squared. And now I have essentially here a Laplacian. And then for the Schrodinger equation, the um, kinetic energy operator is minus one half times the Laplacian in atomic coordinates. And we, using this one, I can calculate the um, eigenvectors of the matrix. And um, then I can plot them. So here we have a few lowest um, solutions to the um, particle in a box. And we can, for example, also solve the Schrödinger equation for the harmonic oscillator. So let's just define a grid. So let's say a grid is from minus 10 to 10 with n points. And um, then the grid spacing will be determined by this grid we defined. And then we need to add the potential energy to the diagonal of the system. So we do this by adding the some one half times x squared into the diagonal of the matrix. We need more grid points and next needs to be a column vector, a row vector. So let's see, let's plot a few lowest order solutions of the harmonic oscillator. It was not working. Uh, oh, uh, so, <clears throat> so the kinetic energy is minus half times the Laplacian. And then we have the potential energy, which was this x squared, one half x squared. And the total Hamiltonian is now kinetic energy plus the potential energy. And now we can see, here we have the lowest order state of the harmonic oscillator, for example. Um, more fun stuff uh, we can do. Uh, we can do um, propagate it in time. So we can, for example, um, construct a propagator. I call it G. Where we take the exponential matrix of the uh, uh, Hamiltonian. And now this will be a full matrix, so it won't be that efficient. But let's, for example, um, let's um, start with the, so we take the wave function of the lowest Gaussian and let's create a coherent state. So let's shift the wave function a little bit, um, like so. Was it like so? Yes. Um, and 
now we have taken the ground state solution of harmonic oscillator and shifted it and now it should start sloshing back and forth and uh, let's see if it does that so we take the wave function multiply it by the propagator and like so and then we need to plot the real and imaginary parts of the wave function like so and um, so let's see if we get a quantum propagation of harmonic oscillator here and yes we do okay so one it would be int int instructive to look at the structure of the uh, density matrix so we can construct the density matrix as an outer product and then we can look at like the real and imaginary part of the density matrix so we can plot the real part and we can plot the imaginary part of the density matrix So I wonder, are we doing, maybe we should not do it like so, let's see, ah, no, it was correct, yeah, density matrix is the, an outer product, so, 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 um, I am, so here it is completely real and then it's sort of um, mm, I can't really um, sort of uh, I was expecting a more better ah oh, we we could of course do a Wigner transformation I mean that would sort of make it more like classical like one should would in Wigner presentation I think yeah yeah exactly so you can see that it um, starts to have more momentum so there's like uh, speed um, so there's variation of the face a lot of that in this when it's going through the center and then it's sort of more real in the extremum points when there's no velocity so that's when yeah so if you Fourier transform that you would get like uh, something is circling like an uh, harmonic oscillator uh, classical harmonic oscillator okay but that was the first demo of uh, solving harmonic oscillator with finite difference